Wow, guys, what can you say? I'm in the toy room. What we're going to do here, Mr. Knight, you've invited us to come play with your toys. We're going to shoot a lot of unicorn guns, which means they're one of a kind. We're going to get out on the range and shoot them. Can you kind of give me an idea what you have here? You bet, Jerry. We're going to, we're going to talk about different guns here, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have a, a fun day. I'm looking forward to it also. How can you not have a good time, guys? <laughs> Stay posted, and we're going to try to make this happen. Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchellack, and I'm at the Institute of Military Technology down here in Titusville, Florida. But I got something behind my back here, guys, I've only read about, and I'm about to jump out of my britches. I'm going to have to show it to you then. It's an original Armalite AR-10. You're looking at a semi-automatic, fully automatic, 308 caliber rifle that weighs under six pounds, easy. Manufactured in the mid-50s. This is like the great-grandfather of the AR platforms, the SR-25s and all the modern sporting rifles out there today. So you're looking at something that's a little, maybe a little bit older than I am. And I've yet to shoot one. So uh, again, Mr. Knight pulled this out of his collection. He was nice enough to loan it to me for the day. I've got a magazine of 20 rounds of ball ammo. So I'm gonna, just gonna start off a little bit, pop a few rounds semi-auto and see how that feels. And uh, guys, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is. Uh, you don't get to do this just every day, so let's go ahead and make it happen. Eyes and ears, guys, going hot. Let's just do a couple of semi-automatic shots here. Yeah. Doing about 16, 17 splits. Not bad considering how light it is and how much firepower you have, but I know what you're thinking, guys. It's got a full auto switch. Go ahead and use it. So let's go ahead and put this thing on RPM mode. All right, we're on full auto. Put the selector on full auto. Let's finish the magazine out. Here we go, target in the middle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that thing looked like it's mad at ammunition. It just wants it out of the magazine as fast as possible. Wow. That thing was cooking, guys. That was actually uh, running about eight hundredths of a second between shots. So the total, man, that thing was smoking. The rate of fire on that was 633 rounds per minute in a full battle caliber 762 by 51. Guys, what an experience. Wow. <laughs> I got to have one of these. I don't know where I will find it, but what a platform. AR-10, guys. Hey guys, I don't know about you, but I never thought in my lifetime I'd fire an AR-10. So I had the chance today and I jumped right on it. Mr. Knight was kind enough to loan me one of his personal firearms again. And uh, what can I say, it was, a, it was a thrill to have it on the range. And I would like for you to give us some details on this, because this is considered pretty much the grandfather of all the modern sporting rifles and what we use now as, a, as the U.S. service weapons. So. It is, it is. And uh, Jerry, kind of a, the interesting thing is this, this gun was actually made in Holland and um, Armalite, which was uh, the Gene Stoner worked for, okay. in, invented this gun and they s traded the rights to manufacture this gun for the rights to build one of their aircraft that they had. And the Fairchild okay. uh, Aircraft Company took the rights to build the airplane and they let the Holland use the rights to build this AR-10. It's a, <clears throat> it's a, uh, just, er, it's, it's, it's an early, as you can see, it's an, this is an, an early forging, top and bottom. It has a 20 round uh, removable magazine that basically, a box magazine that was uh, uh, aluminum, 
a lightweight. waffle magazine. Yep, lightweight, yeah. Very, very lightweight. But some of the neat features of this gun, it has the same gas system as the M16, comes comes back, but you can see the sight, even though this gun was, was actually manufactured in about 1957 to 1958, okay. Okay. but you can see this rear sight basically is very much like the M16A2 that wasn't adopted until 1982. So you can see the, the kind of the resemblance of, of a lot of the different uh, things. This particular gun is in the, um, is somewhere, somewhere in the neighborhood of about the, the, the 4,000 serial number range. And the unique thing about this gun is this was what was called the transitional gun. They only built about 9,900 AR-10s in Holland. So there was okay. never a really a, a tremendous amount of them made. But as you got to see today, the gun is very lightweight, very, very well built, very well machined. And, uh, and also, it happens to be very accurate. Uh, we've taken this, these guns out and we've actually fired them for group with mm -hmm. modern ammunition. Okay. And they basically, all of them could fire pretty much under one inch. At, a, at 100 yards, so under a minute of angle, they could have, and as you can see, they did not have all the fancy right. floating hand guards or anything right. back then. From what I found on the range, it's very lightweight, but that straight stock design really contributes to keeping it on target. So even back in the 50s, they were up on the, on the curve of making things right, straight line stock, the high sight here, of course, to make, make it fit your face, pistol grip on the bottom, detachable box magazine, I've never talked to a soldier who said he had too much ammunition. Or maybe if he was swimming, but but there again, it was uh, it was it was a pleasure to fire it and get to shoot it on full auto was was quite a treat for me. So, and you get the idea that you're actually shooting a full caliber uh, rifle when you shoot a 762 in a little lightweight gun like this. But all in all, it was a good experience, and I, I appreciate you having us out on the range today. Thank you, thank you very well, much. Well, thank you, Jerry, and it's uh, it is quite a unique gun and. Uh, the, the main thing is, is most, peop most people don't realize the quality that they had of when they were manufacturing guns. Back then, they didn't have CNC machines when they built this gun, but as okay. you can see, the quality of it is very, very high. Very good. Very rare. Thank you.